Here are the best things to do in Charleston. The Battery. One of the most popular locations for tourists and locals in Charleston is the Charleston Battery. Located at the tip of the Charleston Peninsula, you will find the Battery in White Point Garden. You can take a walk along the Battery and defensive seawall and get a great view of the Charleston Harbor, Fort Sumter, and the historic mansions located here. You can also tour the Edmonston Alston House Museum along the Battery, which is the home where the Confederate General Beauregard watched the attack on Fort Sumter. Rainbow Row One of Charleston's most famous areas and most photographed sites is at Rainbow Row on East Bay Street. This location is named due to the 13 colorful historic homes that are painted in pastel colors dating back to the 1700s. If you're visiting Charleston, make sure to stop by Rainbow Row. Charleston City Market The Charleston City Market is one of the oldest public markets in the United States and is open every day of the year except for Christmas. The market stretches for four city blocks in downtown Charleston. The City Market is a great place to visit to look for souvenirs from Charleston, including beautiful and historic handcrafted sweetgrass baskets. This craft originated in Africa and has been passed down through generations. The Pineapple Fountain Visit Waterfront Park in downtown Charleston, where you will find the iconic Pineapple Fountain. During colonial times, pineapples were very rare and expensive and became the ultimate symbol of hospitality if you were able to obtain one for your guests. When you visit Charleston, make sure to look for pineapple decorations throughout the city. Waterfront Park also has a pier where you can take a water taxi and a fountain that kids enjoy playing in in the hot summer months. Angel Oak Tree The Angel Oak Tree is on Johns Island and is a must-see if you're in the area. The tree is estimated to be approximately four to 500 years old, but some people believe it's much older than that. It is amazing how far the branches of this tree extend, the longest being about 187 feet. The USS Yorktown The USS Yorktown is a great location to visit for history buffs. The Yorktown is an aircraft carrier that was used during World War II and was named after the aircraft carrier that was sunk after the Battle of Midway in 1942. The USS Yorktown was also used during the Vietnam War and was decommissioned in 1970. The Yorktown can be viewed at Patriots Point Naval and Maritime Museum along with a destroyer, a submarine, the Vietnam Experience Exhibit, Cold War Memorial, the Medal of Honor Museum, and a variety of military aircraft from different eras. Take a tour of Charleston. Charleston has such a vast history that I definitely recommend you take at least one tour while you're here. You could take a horse carriage tour in downtown Charleston that are about an hour long and they are a great way to get to know the city a little better. You can also take a historic walking tour, a food tour, a ghost tour, or take a pirate tour and discover stories of Blackbeard and his blockade of Charleston Harbor, and much more. I will link to some of the most popular Charleston tours below. Fort Sumter You can visit the location of the first shots of the Civil War located in Charleston Harbor at Fort Sumter. This fort took significant damage during the Civil War, but you can take a tour of the fort and see what's left. There are two departure points for Fort Sumter, one at Liberty Square next to the aquarium in downtown Charleston, and the other at Patriots Point in Mount Pleasant. There is a museum located at this fort. You will be able to see the original Union flag that was taken down after the battle when the Confederacy took control of the fort. Go to the beach. There are no beaches on the Charleston Peninsula, but Charleston is surrounded by barrier islands, and there are some of the nicest beaches in the nation nearby. To the south, you can visit Folly Beach, Kiwa, or Edisto Beach. And to the north, you can go to Sullivan's Island or Isle of Palms. If you'd like to know more about these beaches, be sure to watch my video about the five best beaches in Charleston, which I'll link to below. If you're looking for a place to go surfing, go camping, fishing, a place to watch for dolphins, a place to look for shark teeth, or a place to bring the family, there's a beach near Charleston for you. Plantations and Gardens there are many great historic plantations and beautiful gardens to visit in the Charleston area, including Middleton Place, Magnolia Gardens, Drayton Hall, all located along Ashley River in West Ashley, McLeod Plantation on James Island, and Boo Hall Plantation in Mount Pleasant. Try to visit these gardens in the spring if you can, so you can see the blooming flowers. If you're willing to drive a little further out, I also recommend visiting Cypress Gardens in Monk's Corner, which was the location of some scenes from the movies, The Notebook, and The Patriot. Cypress Gardens is a great location to take a swamp boat ride and to see some alligators. Take a boat tour. The Charleston Peninsula is surrounded by water and there are a lot of options for boat tours. I recommend taking a tour of Charleston Harbor on the Scooter Pride, 
which is an 84 foot tall ship that is modeled after an 18th century vessel. You can sail during the day or you can take a wine tasting or sunset sail. If you'd like to get out in Charleston Harbor at a very affordable price, you can take a water taxi that will cost you around $14 for an all-day pass. The water taxis depart hourly from four locations including the Maritime Center and Waterfront Park in downtown Charleston and Patriots Point in Charleston Harbor Resort in Mount Pleasant. The Old Exchange in Provost Dungeon The Old Exchange in Provost Dungeon is one of the most historically significant buildings in Charleston and is a must-see if you're in the area. The exchange was built by the British and was finished in 1771 and it's the location that South Carolina ratified the United States Constitution. This building was also used by the British as a place to keep prisoners of war during the American Revolution. French Quarter If you're in the Charleston area, visiting the French Quarter is a must. The French Quarter is located in downtown Charleston and is the location of the original walled city of Charleston. The French Quarter is home to many historic buildings, including the Dock Street Theater, St. Philip's Church, the French Huguenot Church, the Old Slave Mart Museum, Washington Square, and the Charleston City Market. Morris Island Lighthouse The Morris Island Lighthouse was constructed in 1876 and can be viewed from the northern end of Folly Beach at the Lighthouse Inlet Heritage Preserve. The preserve also has a nice beach area and is a great place to view the lighthouse and to spend the day on the beach. The Morris Island Lighthouse was originally created on land, but now stands several hundred feet offshore due to erosion. South Carolina Aquarium The South Carolina Aquarium is located in Liberty Square in downtown Charleston, and it's a great place to bring the family. The aquarium has a touch tank and a variety of animals, including alligators, a bald eagle, fish, sharks, sea turtles, and much more. The aquarium also has a sea turtle care center that will provide treatment and rehabilitative care for stranded or injured turtles. Historic Churches Charleston is known as the Holy City, and if you visit the city, you will see church steeples everywhere. Charleston quickly became a symbol of religious freedom, and there are many historic churches that you can visit while you're here. Some of these churches include the Gothic Revival French Huguenot Church, built in 1884, the St. Philip's Church that was built in 1836, and Charleston's oldest surviving church, St. Michael's Church, where President George Washington once worshipped while visiting Charleston. You can also visit the historic graveyards and final resting places of some of our founding fathers, including Charles Pickney and John C. Calhoun, located at the St. Philip's Church Graveyard. Enjoy the great food in Charleston. Charleston is well known for its amazing food, and if you're in the area, you won't need to go far to find a great restaurant. A few popular restaurants that you can try while you're here are Fig, Husk, and Rodney Scott's Barbecue. If you're looking for a unique place to try local seafood and oysters, I recommend Bowen's Island Restaurant, located on James Island. Or you can go to one of the many restaurants located along Shem Creek and Mount Pleasant. If you'd like to try a variety of different foods in Charleston, there are a few different organizations that offer guided food tours that take around 2-3 to three hours, including Charleston Culinary Tours, and I'll link to some of these tours below. The Hunley the Hunley was used by the Confederacy during the Civil War and was the first submarine in history to sink an enemy ship. On February 17, 1864, the Hunley attacked and sank the USS Housatonic, but the Hunley did not return to shore after that attack. The Hunley was finally located in 1995 and raised in 2000 and is now on display at the Hunley Museum. You can also view the gold coin that saved Hunley Captain George Dixon's life at the Battle of Shiloh. Captain Dixon was shot at this battle, but had this gold coin in his pocket and it absorbed the impact of the shot. King Street. Now more than 200 years old, King Street is one of the most historically significant locations in Charleston. King Street is one of the most famous shopping streets in the country and is a popular location for tourists, college students, eating, nightlife, and more. King Street is in the heart of downtown Charleston and you will see plenty of Charleston's history if you take a long walk down this historic street. King Street has three different areas along the street, including Upper King Street, also known as the Design and Dining District, Middle King Street, or the Fashion District, and Lower King Street, also known as the Antique District. House Museums Charleston has many house museums built in the 17 and 1800s that you can tour while you're here, including the Nathaniel Russell House, the Aiken Rett House, the Joseph Manigault House, the Edmonston Alston House along the Battery, and the Hayward Washington House. You can also view the Williams Mansion, formerly known as the Calhoun Mansion, and at around 24,000 square feet is the largest private residence in Charleston. This home has a huge collection of period furniture and antiques, 
and I definitely recommend taking a tour of this home if you get a chance. Charleston River Dogs. The Charleston River Dogs are a minor league baseball team in Charleston and you will have a great time attending one of their games. Legendary actor Bill Murray is a co-owner and the director of fun of the River Dogs and sometimes attends these games. The River Dogs Stadium is located on the Charleston Peninsula at Riley Park, also known as the Joe. Four Corners of Law Visit the Four Corners of Law in downtown Charleston located at the intersection of Broad Street and Meeting Street. This location has four buildings representing four different laws, including God's Law at St. Michael's Church, Federal Law at the Federal Courthouse and Post Office, State Law at the Charleston County Courthouse, and City Law at Charleston City Hall. Charlestown Landing Charlestown Landing is where the city of Charleston actually began and is located in West Ashley, not on the Charleston Peninsula. This is the location where the first English settlers came back in the 1670s. The settlers would eventually move to the Charleston Peninsula to what is now known as the Historic District in downtown Charleston. This site includes a 17th century replica sailing ship, an animal forest and zoo, miles of trails, gardens, cannons, and an exhibit hall. All right, that was my list of the best things to do in Charleston. Again, if you're looking for more things to do in Charleston, please visit my blog post about the 100 best things to do in Charleston at garrisoncharleston.com or click the link in the description below. If you're considering moving to Charleston, you can give me a call or text at 843-769-1836 and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have about moving to this area. Thanks for watching.